made me progress. So I kind of went through the youth leagues, then started refereeing kind of under 16 football, then to under 18 football, and then into men's football. There wasn't really so much of a pathway for women's football as there is now. So I did referee some women and girls football. So I used to referee up Coventry Girls Academy under 16s on a Sunday. And I used to referee men's football on a Saturday once I started doing open age. Um, And then just kind of went through in that respect, really. And like I said earlier, even the merit table is slightly different because you're assessed by a person who's at the ground when you're coming through grassroots football. But it's the same the same way, really. You have to get a decent score to finish at the top of the table to get promoted. So it's league by league, really. And then you go into kind of more semi-professional football. And then I got promoted to referee on the West Midlands League. Then I went from the West Midlands League to Southern League mainly, and then Southern League into Conference North and South. And then I went up as an assistant separately, Um, So just like year by year, I was quite lucky, really, that I kind of went quite quickly. Every year, I pretty much got promoted. So lots of people, it doesn't happen like that, too. Do you know what percentage of the top people sort of get through? How many of you went through? So I know that when you go to Contrib, there was a list of about 300 referees. And I think they took 11 went the year that I got promoted. It's really difficult to get promoted, really, because there's so many of you fighting for them places. And obviously, with relegation as well. Fortunately, I haven't had to go through that. But if you finish then kind of at the bottom, you have to be kind of kicked off and then you have to go back down a league. Yeah, because you make it sound like, oh, yeah, I just progressed and progressed. But let's not underestimate. This was tough. It was hard work. You had to be fully committed to what you were doing. But you're just clearly the best in your field that you always finished in that top percentage. Oh, thank you. I, I worked hard. I'm a bit of a stickler for like, why? What could I have done differently to get that decision right? And I think that helps. I think that helped me go through the ranks. And in that top percentage, as you were moving up, were you moving up purely with men? Yeah, mainly. Um, there was a few other girls on the leagues, but not not many. I know that when I got to um, Conference North and South, there was another girl on the Conference North and South as well. And on the Football League, there was Amy. I'm sure that she was running the line at the same time as me on the Football League. But there was only ever one or two of us. It was never, it was never many. Um, there's, I think there's a few more coming through now. It's, it is changing. We've just had another girl promoted to our second division, Natalie. So I'm really yes, happy for her. She's Astle, just got, yes. Yeah, she's just got the call up for the championship next year. So yeah, we're getting there. The system is in place and the system is working. Uh, but we'll chat about that a little bit more later on. But how do you feel about other females looking up to you and being like, oh, I really want to be like that. How do I do that? Do, are you proud to be that person? Are you comfortable being that person sort of leading the charge for females in this role? I think if the girls look up to me and think that they can do it because they know that I'm there and I've done it already, then that can only be a good thing. I don't really like to call myself a role model. I'm just there doing my job. Um, Mm -hmm. And if it shows to other girls that they can make it, then, you know, that's a great thing too. And yeah, there are more girls coming through. It just shows that you can do it. And apart from when you were 14 thinking, oh, I could have easily just quit and give up now because it got a bit tough. Was there any other moments during your career where you did think, this is this is tough? Is this definitely where I'm going to keep going? Yeah, there's a, couple, there's a couple of times. To be fair, I'd already made it to the Premier League when there was one of my most challenging moments, I would say. The birth of my daughter five years ago. So I, um, I had her and was fully hoping, yep, I'll be back. So, you know, I went running. I think it was like, three or four weeks after I'd given birth because I wanted to get straight back out to football. And um, I was like, this is not happening without going into too many details as female. um, (laughs) Went to the doctor and they basically said, no, you won't be able to do any sport again. Well, I was like, well, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready to be giving up a career that I've worked so hard for and that I love just because I'm not allowed to train anymore. This is not going to happen. So um, I got referred to a couple of of doctors and all said the same. So I was like, right, this, so then at this point, it's taking me longer and longer to get back onto the pitch. Bearing in mind, I've already had nearly a year out being pregnant. Um, then went to a specialist through the football association, worked with the female athletes and actually gave me quite a simple tool that I did that made me get back to training. But for, I would say six months after I gave birth was the hardest six months ever because I was wanting to train something I'd already done 
all my life been sporty going for runs you know that kind of thing being active being told that I couldn't do it was a really really difficult thing for me so I had a lot of family support you know and a lot of support from the Premier League and our bosses at the Premier League have been were absolutely fantastic you know some of the lads that I work with were like you know you'll get there and a lot of support um, and trying to find out doctors that I could see that could get me back on the pitch um, was you know fantastic and then so I think again if it felt like a real big hurdle that I managed to do to get back through the fitness test then when I'd had nearly a year and a half out of football other challenges really tie in with that is fitness for me Um, I have to work really really hard because I have to pass the men's fitness test and I wouldn't have it any other way if I want to be on a men's league I pass the men's fitness test and just talk us a little bit about what that entails what what do you have to do to pass these tests so it's three mini tests all at the same time so one after another you go to the track um, you're there they set up timing gates so speed gates to actually time you per the second so it's not just on stopwatch it's really really specific you um so we have to do what's called a coda test which is like a bit of a sideways out sideways back sprint kind of test it's hard to describe um and there's time limits to that i think it's 10.9 seconds you put me on the spot now i can't remember what they are um and that's, that's test one a bit of a sideways movement because obviously that's what we do in a game. Um, the second test is five 30 meter sprints. Um, so again, through the timing gates, they're just straight, but you only have 30 seconds then till you have to turn around and do the next sprint. So you have to do five of them consecutively. And again, they all have to be under. You get one chance to effectively fail it. So you slip because the track's wet. You do get one other chance, but if you fail two, then that's it. Test over. Um, so that's part two of the test. Then part three of the test is 10 laps of the track, um, split up a bit like, the only thing I can say, it's a bit like a bleep test. So it doesn't get faster, but it's you have to be at the next stage by the next beep. So a 75 metre run in 15 seconds, followed by a 25 metre fast walk, I would say. And then that time varies whether you're a referee or an assistant referee. So at the moment, our test is 15 seconds for the run, 20 seconds for the walk. And that is... Um, you obviously have to do four of them in one lap times 10 laps. So um, again, you get one warning. So if you're not in the box by the beep, then you you get a warning. And then if you fail twice, then you're out. So I feel like I'm exhausted listening to that. That is incredible yeah, that that's the sort of standard that you have to go. And fair play to you for getting back because obviously, yeah, you're a mum as well. Let's just put that first. That's probably more important than being a ref- like an assistant referee as well. So to get back from having a baby, fighting against the odds you have got an incredible never say die attitude to things haven't you yeah I think I am a little bit like that and a little bit when somebody says you can't do that a little bit I think why not you know that's kind of my oh well I'll give it a go well it's got you far it's got you far now listen um Sean throughout this podcast we're going to play a couple of games oh no and I (laughs) how competitive are you as a person yourself you just said if someone says they can't then you do it yeah I am um I've Put me in a quiz though and I'm rubbish. Put me on a track <laughs> and I've got a sprint against somebody. I'm there. Okay, well, let's see how we go with this. So this first one, the reason I did it is because we all love sports. Sport has competition. Yeah. So on my leaderboard at the minute, we've got Alicia Ferguson, ex-pro, up at the top. She's actually joint top with football agent Georgie Hodge. They've both got 27 points. So that's your aim oh throughout this podcast to collect that many points. But the first thing we're going to do, um, it's going to be worth five points. And I am going to show you a clip. And I want you to just have a quick look at it. And tell me, well, see if you recognize from where it's from, firstly. Yeah. And then sort of let's just talk around that moment of the clip, your thoughts, feelings and emotions. And what did this moment mean to you? Van Bommel by Bayern speelde. Eigenlijk constant geblesseerd was, maar ze konden het zeer goed met elkaar vinden. Do you recognize that moment? Yes, definitely remember that moment. <laughs> Where's it from? I think the um, audio on that might give us a clue because I'm sorry that there was like Dutch over the top of it. It's the only footage I could find of it, which was annoying. But tell me what it was. Uh, my first European men's game. So I was at PSV. Um, yeah, so I definitely remember that moment. Probably, I would say, one of the biggest moments in my career. Something that I really, really wanted to do for a number of years. Wanted to do a men's international game, yeah. And the call came. How did the call come about? 
you just get a normal text message, like an international appointment. Um, Stop. You get yeah. a text message to referee something like that? Well, it's like an official appointment. So, you, well, you have to, you get a message to say, are you available on these dates? And you kind of know that that is an appointment then. And then it comes out the the email because obviously everything's really confidential. So it has to be like pretty, you know, individual and, and you know, data protection, all that kind of thing, um, yeah. confidential. And then um, me and the referee that I was working with, again, the one that I said earlier that I work quite a lot with, Cav, me and him were ringing each other at the same time because obviously he knew how important it was for me. So he'd obviously had his message at the same time as me. And then the, the followed up email. So we were ringing each other like, ah! I remember screaming down the phone at him and he was like yeah we've got one you know like eventually so you don't know at that point where you're going you just know the name of the competition and what dates you'll be officiating so kind of straight away you're on the computer like what game could it be and you go oh I don't think it'll be that one because that's really far away or I don't think it'll be that one because you know that's in especially because we kind of come through European stuff together and he's been you know so it was his first group stage game as well so it's a big game for him not only for me and you're kind of looking, getting all excited about where could it be? What game could it be? That kind of thing. What's on it? Again, you know, we always fight for these kind of games. So, yeah, a, a real, I, I remember sitting in the car on the phone to him, like screaming at him. You know, he thinks I'm crazy. But, yeah, a great, great time, really. And then, yeah, you stepped out in that lineup there, PSV versus Lask. Do you, do you remember feeling nervous at all? Do you get nervous before a game or is yeah, this? Yeah, no, I do get nervous. Yeah, um, definitely nervous because you want to get everything right. So it's like you don't, and a little bit in me, I feel like because people are giving me these opportunities that I've got to prove that I deserve them, if that makes sense. So I'm like, well, I've got to do it for all these people. I mean, especially Cav um, as my referee, you know, he's really fought for me as well to be kind of like, no, I want to take Sean on my international games, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm like, I've got to do it. I cannot let him down in this big stage by getting an offside call wrong that leads to a goal or something like that. You know, you've got to be. So I think it's more, I get nervous because I want to get everything right. So I'm so focused. I'm not really nervous about the stadiums or or anything like that, and not specifically decisions, but I'm, I just want to get everything right. And I, f- I feel a bit like everyone says, well, when, you, when your first decisions come and gone, you'll feel a lot better. And I always do, whether it be a throw in or an offside, once you've kind of like made that decision, you kind of feel like you're in the game. Um, and yep. you communicate so much on the comms set that w- there's literally never a quiet moment, really. Um, people don't realise, I don't think, how much we talk on every decision, the, obviously the four of us. So it gets kind of quite you can't really concentrate on anything else. Then you have to focus on giving each other the information you need to make the decisions. Yeah, once that moment's over, I think, then I kind of relax a little bit. Fabulous. Do you have a favourite game that you've ever officiated? Oh, that's got to be one. Um, Everyone asks me this and I'm like, well, there's so many at different points in my career. And I always look back, I mean, my first first football league game, Hereford-Port Vale, I always look back at that and I think that was like, my first game on the football league, you know, I've made it into professional football. That was like a real big thing for me. And I'll never forget that moment. I had a real tough goal line decision to make before we had goal line technology and got that right. Um, so I always remember that game specifically. And then I always remember my first Premier League game, Sunderland Blackpool. So I kind of always like, I re- think I remember things at a certain step. I remember going yes. to, um, to Frankfurt to do my first women's international Champions League game. Um, so I think, it, steps in my career I kind of remember but I don't the, the rest in between is all a little bit of a fog well you just mentioned that the before goal line technology you were doing this because you've been professional now for what since 2009 you turned so we're talking 11 years now so yeah. it's been a long road to get to this path um how much has the game changed since you started to where it is now in terms of everything from the pace of the game the skill of the game to the technology in the yeah, game yeah everything i mean everything changes and adapts and i mean like the laws change every year there's a little bit of a tweak here and there um you know so i think it's adapting to that all the time so yeah i think that the pace of football is quicker so our fitness has to be quicker with it um, the tactical awareness of players and the ability to move the ball so quickly has improved. Um, 
Also, I think it's not only the Premier League that's improved. I think the EFL, the quality of all football has really improved. And then women's football as well is a huge, huge difference in women's football, the professionalism in women's football. I think that's a big, I've seen a bigger growth probably in women's football since I started doing women's football. I suppose littler changes, but still changes in men's football. Um, I suppose like even the media and the, the amount of cameras that are on every game, you know, it used to, you know, you used to have probably five cameras. Now you're looking at the big 20 cameras games, um, you know, with your back cam and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. There's nothing, you know, when you're watching Sky and you see them put the virtual reality on of what an assistant 